Hi there. Welcome to Organic Chemistry 2, our remote edition. Uh, I wanted to take a few minutes with this video to explain what the course structure is going to look like in the fall of 2020. So first, let's talk about the difference between an online course and a remote course, because we are going to be doing a remote course in the, this fall. So in a, an online course, both the students and the instructor choose to take or teach with this method. Uh, and so they're optimally equipped to do so with the tools, the expertise, the time, the environment to work in. It's pretty ideal. What we're doing is a remote course where we really have to take this or teach in this version or wait till the next time. Um, and so we're doing this with the understanding that many or most of us are under equipped to do so. Um, and the other thing, as you know, is that we're doing this at an unprecedented scale. All the courses doing this at once, all the professors, all the students. So this is really a big challenge that all of us are facing. So as we're doing this change to a remote course, we're going to really take equity and inclusion into account. I know from our past courses and on a learn from the survey that we're doing in this course with the link available on Brightspace, that many people in the class may not have a printer or working or consistent Wi-Fi. Uh, many people don't have a calm place to work free of distractions. And that's that's one of the cases for me. Uh, some people may not have a uh, computer or other tools they need. Uh, some people may not have uh, their own health, family members' health, maybe directly caused by COVID-19 or because issues uh, that have indirectly arisen because of it. We also know that people can be really stretched in terms of time uh, with family responsibilities, working for the family business, working in different time zones. So these are all things that we are going to be taking into account in this course. We also know that people have many, uh, there are a number of accessibility uh, needs and requirements as well. So auditory, visual, cognitive, physical. So these are all also things that we take into account. And I always welcome your feedback uh, if there's anything that you think is missing in the course. And I also want you to know that you're welcome in the course. This is a course for, for anybody. It's a science course. Um, and, and so just know that you are always welcome and I always welcome your feedback if there's ways that you think that we can create a more inclusive environment in the course. So to think about then how we build equity and inclusion into organic chemistry, let's take a look at some of the pillars that I'm using as I'm designing this course. You already know about the equity pillar. But also very important is going to be the science itself, the organic chemistry. We're going to be looking at how we build community within the course and how we take care of our wellness uh, as we go through this fall of remote teaching and learning. So speaking to the learning outcomes at first, that's the knowledge, skills and values that you as the learner will demonstrate at the end of the learning period. And you're going to find those listed in the syllabus. All the videos, all the co course components, the quizzes, the tests, they're all aligned with those intended learning outcomes. So starting with those intended learning outcomes, you'll have a series of short videos to watch each week. Then there'll be a weekly quiz to do on Brightspace that's aligned with those short videos. There's also going to be some optional problem sets that will give you some extra practice. And I always post the solutions with those problem sets as well. So those are going to be the asynchronous components, meaning that they're going to be posted on Brightspace. You do them in your own time within the, the deadlines. Then we're going to have some synchronous components and that's when we'll be there present all at the same time together. So classes that will be happening uh, during video conference and there we're going to be doing interactive questions, problem sets and groups, things like that. And DGDs, which stands for discussion groups, they're essentially tutorials where you'll be working with a TA through problems. All of those synchronous pieces are going to be recorded. So if you can't attend any of those, you can always get them on Brightspace afterwards. There'll be lots of ways of communicating in the course, and I'll talk more about that in a second. As a final assessment piece, there'll be uh, two midterms during the semester and then a final exam. Now the course environment. One of the things that can happen in an online course is that it turns into me talking to a series of initials or blank faces. And I hope that's not the situation that, that we have in the course. In fact, I'll be doing a lot of things to build community in the course so that it turns into what this uh, course looked like. But this is a graduate course that I taught um, a couple of months ago. Uh, and, and this is the kind of environment we want where people are participating, chatting, comfortable turning their videos on, um, always optional, but will always be encouraged. So I hope that we have a really positive course environment. So some of the ways to create that community in the course, you'll see the welcome messages that I'll be sending out, uh, course syllabus, which will communicate some of those community-based pieces. 
You'll see surveys throughout the course. Um, the very first one will ask you about some of the tools that you have available to you. Others are going to be asking you what you think we should start, stop, or continue in the course, uh, all intended to keep building uh, the course structure and improving it. As I've said, there'll be classes that are recorded. We'll be talking about how we want to be having those online conversations. So this is one possibility that I've shown on screen here, like joining early, uh, raising your hand, turning on your video so that we see each other in the room, giving extra warmth with the comments or questions that we have. Um, feel free to use the chat function, these kinds of things. We're going to touch base in the first couple of classes just to make sure this is the way we want our course to run. You'll be seeing weekly announcements from me. Uh, and then you can always communicate through office hours or by email or by the discussion forum in the course. So a bit more about building community. So I'm not just going to be sending out those videos or just lecturing because if I do that, it's me talking at you all the time. And so there'll be, there'll be some of that to communicate uh, the, the content, but I want more interaction than that in the course. And so a little bit more comes from emails, office hours, and there I get to talk to a few of you, but we've got hundreds of students in this course. So there'll be some interactive videos, polling that we'll do in class where I can ask you questions and we can see as a group who answers. And that gets a bit more communication and participation and engagement, but still not building ways for all of us to talk with each other. So possibly the most important piece are the opportunities that we'll have to go into breakout rooms, to talk in small groups, um, to talk asynchronously in discussion forums, through chats. This will be a really important component of the course. Now know that your participation is, is, is optional in this part. So it's up to you to choose how much and when you participate or when you choose not to. I'll encourage it, but I won't require it. A couple of things we're gonna do along the way. Um, you know, polls that just let us have a little bit of fun. You can say that if, whether or not you spend most of your day in sweatpants these days. Uh, you might strongly disagree, you might strongly agree. Um, what kind of ways you want to engage most in the course, whether you want to be part of the more asynchronous parts uh, or whether the more synchronous parts are, are better for you. Um, and how important it is for you to connect with other colleagues, classmates during this time. Is that important to you? Maybe it's not at all. Um, and to some people, it's going to be really important. It's going to be the essential part of the community and the course. So these are kinds of the things you can look forward to seeing as we get started and working all the way through the course. Finally, it's really important for me to support your learning and your wellness throughout the course. So a few things that we do uh, that I'll be doing to, to help you do that. First is giving some tools. And so if you go into Brightspace right now, you can see some of the resources from our, our student academic support services. Um, you can see some worksheets. We have a module called the Growth and Goals module that helps you become a more effective learner. So you can go take a look at that and get started on it if you wish. There's also a plan for online learning and work that you can fill out. You can adapt it for um, however you want. This is actually something that I use myself and it reminds me of how I need to take care of my physical health, my mental health, uh, what my goals are for the semester, or even just for a week. Uh, what my schedule looks like and sometimes I just refer myself to my you know, bigger electronic schedule there and all the way down to what my tasks are for the week. So all the resources that we'll use in the course are going to be open education resources which means that they're going to be completely free. You won't have to pay for anything that um, and any of these learning tools that we need uh, in the course. So I hope that you've been able to see through this video a, a bit more about the course structure, um, how we're going to address questions of equity in the course, how we're going to build community, and the way, some of the ways that we're going to pay attention and, and be mindful of, of wellness in the course as well. So feel free to reach out at any time. You can reach me by email over the summer, and I'll open up more ways uh, to connect and communicate once the course starts in September. Until then, enjoy your summer. Um, even if you feel free to connect, know that there's nothing that you are required to do until the course actually starts. And I look forward to seeing you then.